Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a solar storm update Friday, October 29th, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. Sunday, Halloween solar flare headed for Earth could trigger northern lights this weekend in low latitudes and disrupt the power grid. Is it true? Well, let's take a look. Here is that halo event and the X flare in question. This is coming from Lasco C3 and quite a large event with lots of material and ejecta. This is the X flare long duration. It was in M class for about two hours. So hours of powers followed by some a small M flare and some C flares. Nothing significant happening uh, now, which is good news. And the only thing we really have to worry about um, is the geomagnetic storm that is headed towards Earth. There's the X-flare in A1A, 304 angstroms. Now let's just break the event through. We started with an X1 flare, and that resulted in an R3 radio blackout on the 28th of October, followed by a minor radiation storm, which is still ongoing. So let's come check out some of that telemetry. Here we are still in radiation storm above that 10 megavolt warning threshold you can see the red line here and this is a live line now the green line is very high energy particles and a lot of you might have felt a little iller yesterday because there is human effects with these geomagnetic storms and we'll cover that also there was an s1 minor radiation alert yesterday as well and they're calling for g3 geomagnetic storms starting tomorrow and the primary areas of impact poleward of 50 degrees geomagnetic latitude possible effects of this g3 storm if we get up there that would be kp7 we could see power system failures voltage irregularities false alarms on some protection devices spacecraft you can see surface charging orientation problems increased drag on low earth orbits radio and navigation could see intermittent high frequency propagation fading GNSS problems, loss of lock and increased range errors. Aurora may be visible as low as Pennsylvania to Iowa and Oregon. And there are gonna be some human healths. Geomagnetic storms can cause heart rate fluctuations, heart attacks, strokes of all kinds, acute coronary syndrome, blood pressure increase, seizure, migraine risk, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution, suicide risk, mental disorder flare up, radiation risks if you're flying or in high latitudes, and there is an alert for diabetic patients and those with metabolic disorders for airline passengers in high latitudes. Anything above KP7, and we're getting kind of serious. Now, as far as how far the aurora can be observed, well, this is a very generalized example, and it can go much further south, but you can see here the yellow line uh, if we're in G3 geomagnetic storm, KP7, we could see Aurora as far down as Iowa and Pennsylvania there. So for us to see Aurora, it would have to get above KP9 down here in Colorado. So if I see Aurora, well, I know that it's a big storm. Now, NASA's Enlil solar wind prediction is out. And we'll just run that through for you from the beginning. So here you can see the flare coming out. And then the impact on Earth here, boom. And here is a side view of that density. And we can just move this back. And it's showing that the beginning of the impact, if we look in the bottom screen here, the beginning of the impact will be 11 UTC tomorrow. Depending on where you are, you have to add some time to that. So that's the official prediction. And it looks like we're going to be going through this for quite some time. So the initial, look at the darkness of this, the density of this material coming out, this charged plasma. That's going to be quite a hit to Earth. Boom, right there. And they're showing a spike here, a pretty substantial spike. So that could cause, wreak some havoc on some communication systems, satellites, maybe overpower some smaller grids. And we're really, this is an opportunity for all of us who've been watching the sun and waiting for large events to come off the sun to see how our planet Earth does, how the magnetosphere holds up to such a shockwave. This is going to be 
quite intense when it hits. Boom. And the planet's magnetosphere is going to tremble. So, and that's just coming in 24 hours, hours of powers. So here we are looking at the X-ray flux again. Nothing significant since that X flare, just a small M and a C flare and conditions are dropping off. Uh, one other thing I wanted to leave you with here as we wait for impact is some information on the duration of solar flare flares. And this will get you up to speed on why this is a long duration event. Also, you're going to see here that as you go up in class from B, C, M, and X flares, the higher the class, the longer duration they typically are. And from January 2009 to November 2015, 24 minutes is the average duration of the 45 observed X flares. So this one is unique in that it is, well, it's headed directly towards us. And because of that, um, it, uh, this is the most impactful a coronal mass ejection can have on our planet, a direct hit. And you can see here in the model that they're showing oh, a direct hit of some of the most major dense plasmas that were ejected and quite a thick plasma stream that we will be going through here, looking at the radial velocity. The density is insane. Look up, look at that. And so, long lasting event, impacts begin in just about 24 hours. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper fire planning prevents piss poor performance. When we are, well, waiting for impact and a G3 geomagnetic storm watch. Remember, be safe and calm if you're sus you know, going to be doing anything that could cause any of these malfunctions in your body. It's probably a better idea to just rest. That's boom. Be safe. We love you.